friends, welcome back to Sunday School. Uh, it's so good to be able to share God's Word with you again. I hope that you all have been safe at home and um, enjoying yourselves. And I want to offer my congratulations to those of you who may have graduated this year. I'm so sorry that you didn't get a proper graduation, but I know that you'll have many more to come in the future. So as we begin, let's open up with a word of prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you so much that you've been our protection, our help during this pandemic time. Lord, we ask that you will continue to protect us and to be with us and to strengthen us. And Lord, we also ask that you will be with all our graduates. Um, Lord, continue to support them, to help them as they grow, as they expand their knowledge, as they move forward in life. Lord, we know that you will be with them and that you will be their support always. And Lord, we ask that you will be with us here as we study your word. We pray that you will open up our hearts and minds to hear what you have to teach us. And Lord, we pray that you will be able to um, help us to include that into our lives and to uh, store it in our hearts. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, my friends, you will remember hopefully back in March, we had started the book of Genesis. We didn't get too far before we had to stop. And so for that reason, we thought we'd start back again. So I know this may be review for some of you, but it's always good for us to have um, a chance to, to review, to really secure these things in our minds. Um, in a couple weeks, we're gonna talk about somebody who got most of God's words, but not all of them. And um, well, well, we'll leave that for a couple of weeks from now to talk about the disaster that happened. Okay, so without further ado, we're going to start back up talking about creation and um, the first chapter of Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. The Spirit of God hovered over the waters, and God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and morning the first day. And God said, let there be an expanse. Let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters and let it separate the waters from the waters. And God made the expanse and separated the waters that were under the expanse from the waters that were above the expanse. And it was so. And God called the expanse heaven. And there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God, and, God, <laughs> and God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth and the waters that were gathered together, he called seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, let the earth sprout vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, each according to its kind, on the earth. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed according to their own kinds, and trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, each according to its kind. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening and there was morning, the third day. And 
and God said, Let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years, and let them be lights in the expanse of the heavens to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. And God set them in the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth, to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, let the waters swarm with swarms of living creatures and let birds fly across the earth, about the earth, across the expanse of the heavens. So God created the great sea creatures and every living creature that moves with which the waters swarm according to their kinds and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good and God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures according to their kinds, livestock and creeping things and beasts of the field. According to their kinds and everything that creeps on the ground according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the heavens, over the livestock, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of all the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food and to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the heavens and to everything that creeps on the earth everything that has the breath of life. I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God finished his work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it God rested from all his work that he had done in creation. Okay, now, now that we've done this, I hope you all got a perfect seven out of seven, remembering what God created and on which day. Um, but let's think now of some of the things that we can learn from our passage today. First, we know that God 
and only God created the world. Some scientists today, they say, oh, the world just came together on its own. There was evolution or there was the Big Bang and presto, the world came to be. But, and they may also say that, oh, the Bible, it's just a fairy tale. It's just a, a story that's made up. But we know better. We know that the Bible is true because of the prophecies that it contains. The Old Testament prophets, they made several prophecies, many prophecies, all of which came true. And so because of that, we can have faith that what God has told us here in his account of creation is in fact true. If I were to tell you in 10 years, you will be doing this and this and this and this, and 10 years later, it comes to pass, and you, exactly everything that I said happens, then you would be probably inclined to think that, oh, yeah, we can believe um, what she says about other things as well. Well, the same thing is true for the Bible because we know that um, what God prophesied to us did in fact come true. We can trust that the Bible's word is true. Therefore, we can trust that God um, is in fact good, he is in fact truthful, he is in fact holy, and he is incapable of telling us a lie. Some of the scientists also may say, they try to explain things away by saying, oh, um, well, a day, you know, a, a day could have been maybe thousands of years. Maybe that explains why the earth looks old or why we measure the earth to be old. Well, the word in the original language doesn't imply anything of the sort. It implies it is a standard word for a 24 hour day. We, with our limited knowledge, are no match for God's incomparable knowledge. Um, so there's no reason for us, just because we cannot understand it, to think that, oh, we need to try to explain away God's thing. We need to try to find some sort of rational explanation for why what we measure doesn't match up to what God tells us. It's our knowledge that is deficient, not God's. Um, certainly none of us could create the world, much less just simply speak it into existence. Compared to God, our knowledge is only like a newborn baby's. So there's no need for us to try to explain away anything. We merely need to trust that God knows what he's talking about. Um, Another thing that I'd like to point out to you, and I tried to emphasize it as we read the scripture, is that every time God created something, he saw that it was good. And then at the end, when he saw it all together, he saw that it was very good. God is incapable of making anything bad. Now, you may have seen videos on the internet about people who were stuck at home. They decided to bake bread, make cookies, whatever they were cooking and some of them posted some very spectacular failures. We are imperfect creatures. We make mistakes. Um, sometimes our cookies turn out to be more like hockey pucks than an actual cookie. Um, but that's not the case with God. Everything that God made was perfect. Everything that God made was good. So we can have assurance that whatever God does for us, it's for the good. Now, we may not understand exactly why God has allowed this pandemic to occur, uh, why bad things happen, but we can have the assurance that God, because he is good and everything that he makes is good, everything he does will be for our good as well. Um, one last thing that I'd like to point out is that um, God merely had to speak and it was so. You know, there are some days when I'm feeling lazy and I don't want to cook and I just wish that I could speak, dinner is ready. But that just doesn't happen, okay? But for God, that was not a problem. God just simply spoke the world into existence. He said, 
let this be done. And it was so. So we know that God is all powerful. God is, in fact, greater than us, greater than anything we can do. We just simply need to put our trust in him. So as a result, we need to honor God as our creator, as our Lord, as a being more powerful than us. And we simply need to put our trust in him. Um, so I hope that as you go through this week, that you may keep that in mind. Uh, bear in mind that God, being the creator of the world, we owe him our obedience, our love, um, our everything, in fact. So we should, in all that we do, strive to honor him, strive to be obedient to him. We should diligently search the scripture to understand what God wants from us. And if we do that, we will bring joy to him. We will glorify him and we will be the people that God wants us to be. All right, so let's close with a quick word of prayer and um, ask God to, to be with us during this week. Dear Lord, thank you so much for creating this wonderful world that we have to live in. You've done so much for us. You've created a beautiful world and all we've done is managed to mess it up. But Lord, you love us anyway. You sent your son to die for us you sought to redeem us when we would have nothing to do for with you and lord we just thank you again for all that you've done for us and we ask lord that you will help us to be the people that you want us to be that we may bring joy to your heart we may glorify you we may bring honor to you lord we ask that you'll be with us during this week help us to keep your words in our heart help us to think constantly of you and how we may obey you and how we may please you. And Lord, we just ask that you will help us in our efforts to do so. And thank you again for what you've done for us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, my friends, I hope to see you in a couple of weeks, and I trust that you will be well. Goodbye.